In today's movie, I'm going to show you how to get output to the screen from Python 3 programs. So go, and he go ahead and open up Idle and you'll see the Python shell. So after you start the Python Idle uh, environment, when you see the shell, select File, New File to open up a new window and the first thing we should do is to because we're going to write our program here we need to make sure we save the program file somewhere where we can find it so I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'm using Linux uh, you may be using Windows or an Apple machine I suggest you save to the desktop then it's easy to find where you saved your code so I'm going to call my program test py and now I'm going to write the code now if you've looked at any of my previous movies how to install Python how to use the idle editor then you'll know how to print so here I'm going to print hello and now text is shown in green so it's enclosed in quote marks either double or single quote marks I'm going to use double for now. And when we print some text, it will be printed exactly as shown between the quote marks. So if you want to print the word hello, you type hello within quote marks within the parentheses of the print function. Notice print is always lowercase. It's a function. It will be shown in purple in the idle editor. Strings are always in quote marks, and they will always be shown in green in the idle editor. So now let's save this code. You can see a little star here which signals that this code has not been saved. So let's select File Save and you'll see that little star disappears. Now I'm ready to run. You select Run, Run Module and the output will be shown in the shell window so you can see the output here. Now you can close the shell window at any time because you have saved the code, it's still available, and there it is. So, as well as text, you can print numbers. So I can print the number 8. I can print expressions. Print 2 plus 2. And when I run this, let's save it first. And you'll see what happens. The output is always in the shell. Remember there's two different windows here and it prints hello, prints 8 and it prints 2 plus 2 which is 4. Now we can add, use the plus to add numbers together in a number arithmetic arithmetic expression. So this is a math expression. Uh, now we can add strings together. Now this is a string, it's just text. So I could say something like this, print hello plus students and this time, let's close this old shell, this time when I run it's going to add together these two strings so it will print hello students. Let's see that. Oh, I forgot to save it this time, so it's reminding me I must save. So I click OK here. OK, so here we have hello, 8, 4, hello students. Now, uh, OK, so if we, you can see that when we join together hello and students, there is no space in between. Now, if you want to add a space as well, it's very easy to do. We just put add a space and then add students. So now it looks a little bit better like this. OK, so let's close this one. Now I'm going to show you how we can use variables. Now a variable is just a place to store a value, whether it's a string value or a number value. So for example, I could say age is assigned 21. 
and then I could say grade is 91. Okay, so it's 21 and 91, 21 for age, 91 for grade. Now this symbol here it doesn't mean equals, it means assign the value on the right to the variable on the left. So it works from right to left and so it doesn't mean equal it's actually got a name the assignment operator it assigns a value to a variable so there's always a variable on the left of the assignment operator so let's now print age and grade so let's print age and we'll also print Great. Let's see how that runs. So let's say first and run. And now you can see it's printing the value that was stored in age and the value that was assigned to and stored in grade. Uh, there we go. So that works. Now I should just remind you here that variables, the name of a variable, also known as the identifier of a variable, should always start with a letter, should not have any spaces in the variable name, and you can include a number in the name, but it, you should never start with a number at the beginning of a variable name. So here we've got a variable called age, and now the variable's name should really tell you what's going to be stored. So here we're going to store an age, and here we're going to store a grade. Now if you want to, you can print out the age and the grade on the same line and we can do that like this we can say print age comma grade and this will allow us to print age and grade just in one print statement let's have a look at that and there it is and it give you a space between the two values now we can also print or store strings or text into variables so for example I can have first name and this statement will store an in this variable so let's also have a last name and this will store the last name Dawson in the variable last name. Now if you want to print first name and last name you can say print first name and plus last name. So here we're actually adding together two strings just like we did before except these are string variables and when it runs and now you can see it's printing the first name and last name uh, because we haven't actually included a space in the first name or last name we need to add the space as well here if we want to have a space between them so I'm going to put plus space plus and then you'll see when it runs this time there'll be a space here let's close the old shell and run again and save and there is our space now another way you can do the same thing is similar to what we did with these number variables is to print first name comma last name and that will automatically put a space between the two variables so let's see how that goes I'm going to save and run and there it is so there's different ways to output the same content onto into the shell window so I hope that's given you some idea of how to get output to the screen, output of strings and output of number, uh, number values or number variables.